Hello and welcome, this is the part number 6 of the series. In today's video I will create a reusable modal component and I'm going to customize it so it will render MUI text fields and these text fields are going to be validated using UP and React hook form. Then once the validation is successful I'm going to pass the data to the authentication component and append user data in there. If that's not enough, I'm also going to adjust search bar components so we can use it to filter out our list of users, which means we'll complete the authentication page. Let's get it started. Go to MUI.com forward slash components forward slash modules. This component can be a foundation for any type of modules, dialogues and popovers, and we are going to use it to create a reusable module. In here, we just want to copy the module along with the other component inputs, and then we are gonna go to our IDE and within the common folder, create a basic module. And within that file, I'm gonna type in RAFCE and this shortcut will create a functional component pasting the imports from your clipboard and we can start customizing our model. So as a wrapper, I'll add in model and for now I will set open to true so I can see it right away. Also, let's copy the styles as I don't want to use the default ones. Paste it right underneath the basic modal function and actually um, let's get the modal content too so we can adjust it for our needs. We're going to paste it within the modal component and once it's done, we can head back to the authentication page and call the basic model to see how it looks within our app. Just need to add the basic model to render function so um, we can look it up in our browser. Remember that for now we have set open prop to true, which means it will always be visible. Okay, I guess it's looking good enough for our needs. We are going to customize the content in a second and let's just focus on the states for now. We're going to make the modal controllable um, so we can open it using the add user button and close it by clicking outside of the modal. So I'm going to do it slightly the other way around and I'll add prop in the authentication page open equals to open. And going to do the same thing within the basic modal component. I'll also define the open prop in there. And once that's done, we can go back to the authentication page and add use state so we can toggle the open state. Okay, so in here, right underneath the authentication function, we go into set the state. So add in const square brackets open set open equals to use state false as we want the model to be closed as default. And just need to import the use state. And now we can update the open state when clicking on the common button. So head to add user const and add set open true. Okay, with that we can open our model when clicking on the button, but we are unable to close the model. So we're going to extend that functionality. Uh, go back to the MUI website and at the bottom click on the modal API link. And this is where you're going to find all the props available for modal components, but we're only going to use the onclose that's expecting a function. And we're just going to copy that and go back to the modal and next to the open at onclose equals to onclose and just define the props. Now we need to call that prop within the authentication page. So um, just next to the open at onclose arrow function set open false. Hit save and if you go back to the browser you'll quickly notice that when you're clicking outside of the modal component the function that we've added closes the modal. Now we're going to add in more props to our model. As you see, I've cleaned up the components and I've started setting the structure, but it wasn't worth the recording time, so I've just skipped that part. To our model, I'm going to add input fields. Later, I'm going to link the validation functionality to them. Um, so if the validation is successful, we will be appending a new item to our user list. And if validation is not successful, then we will throw a validation error. Again, I'm going to skip that part as you should be pretty comfortable with copying the solution rather than me going over adding and customizing inputs and buttons again. 
Okay, this is the updated version. I've changed const styles to model styles and customized JSS in there. You can pause now and just copy the stuff that's in the video, or you can just copy the code straight from the GitHub repo. And the link can be found in the description. I'm also exporting model styles to a separate file called styles.js. So our model component is slightly neater. Now import the model styles back to the basic model and you can see the difference in the render function, added a couple of inputs, um, common buttons, the first one uh, variant equals to contained and has on click that equals to validate with the submit label and the second one with contained variant, on click equals to on close and the cancel label. With the ready structure we know what we want to achieve with the model. Um, we can create a new user model and cut out most of the functionality from the basic model and paste it back to the new user. So type in RAFCE, then we need to import the basic model. And then in a the basic model, we are going to replace some of the data with props. So reusable model remains clean and we could create as many unique models as we want. Now we need to replace the diff with basic model and add the same props that we have in our reusable model. So we just want to copy open and unclose and uh, paste it back to the new user model. And then we can uncomment the title and subtitle props, pass them in and we can call them in the new user model. So we need to add open uh, equals to open and unclose equals to unclose as this will get passed further and then title equals to um, new user. Then we can delete the placeholder from the basic model and we can uncomment the subtitle and copy the message and paste it back into the new user model. We want to be able to put whatever we want inside of our model, uh, not only the inputs, so we can replace the input with the content prop. So just add in content prop and get rid of the uh, box and input and then define the um, content in here. And then we can go back to the new user model, add the content inside of the basic model and we're just gonna um, call the get content function. Right underneath the parent function, add const get content arrow function and just paste the content. Then in here, we want to pass the validate function and call it in the new user model. Um, and we're just going to add an empty arrow function uh, that does nothing for now. We will use the validation function later to go through the input fields and validate them one by one. Let's also define the overriding styles for our new user model. Once that's done, the basic model styles can be deleted. And then finally go back to the authentication page and replace the basic model with new user model and make sure the input is correct as well. We want to copy the text field inputs and replace the ones that we currently have in our app. As I didn't realize, they don't have the helper text prop, which will be very useful for our validation. So just add it in to your custom model components. Also for our validation, we need some extra packages. So type in npm install react hook form, yup, and hook form resolvers. And I'm going to talk you through them once I'll be adding them to our app. We can start replacing the input with text field components and this is what we kind of want, just a text field with placeholder name and label props. No listeners for now. Copy and paste it so we can use it for the email and phone number fields. As we want every field to hold values, we will set required to true and on the UI side you'll notice that the little star came up just in the top right corner of the label. 
Now we can add the error prop and set it to true. Um, so if we do that, then the text field's outline will turn uh, red to indicate that there's something wrong. As you can see, it's changed its color um, and we will be controlling that prop using the validation. We're also gonna uh, set the helper text. Um, so this is basically something that uh, pops right underneath the um, outline input. And this is what we're gonna validate too. So the helper text only gonna come up if the error is set to true. Now we wanna paste the use form from React hook form, Yoop resolver uh, from hook form resolvers Yoop, and uh, the last line is just Yoop. And I'm going to describe them as we're going to build our validation. The import lines can be found in the description and in the GitHub repo. As the first thing, we're going to call the Yoop and create a const called validation schema. Um, this basically will hold all of our validation rules. We could create a custom validator, but in the series, um, I'd focus on the MUI, then that's why I am using third party libraries. So um, just validation schema equals to yup.object.shape, and we're going to define our objects here. So user ID is a string, so user ID yup.string, and we want to make sure that the um, Yup validator knows that this object is required. So below that, dot required, and you can pass your own message in here. In fact, this is a wrong message, um, but I will just paste it below. Um, I'm going to define minimal characters required, so dot min, and then I'm gonna uh, add in a number with a minimal uh, characters required, and then I'm gonna paste that message that I've just added um, above. Next up, we've got the email object. So just below, uh, type in email, colon, yup.string. So the validator know that this value is a string. And then we want this uh, field to be required as well. And we can pass our message in here. So if the um, field is empty, um, then this error message will pop up. Then we've got an email element and that has built in validation and knows when the email address is invalid. So the only thing that we need to do is to add a message. And last but not least is the font number. And um, with this one, it's a bit more tricky as we are going to add a um, regular expression to validate our phone number. Um, but we're gonna do that in a second. So just add in dot matches, and then we're gonna add our name of the const, which in this case is gonna be the phone regex. And uh, we can add our message in there as well. So in here, I'm just gonna type in phone number is not valid. Now we're gonna call the use form hook from the react form hook. So we're gonna destructure it. So first method is the register and this will allow us to register an input. For that, we're going to use the input names. Handle submit is the function that receives the form data if the form validation is successful. And then form state is the object that contains the information about the form state. And we're going to call an error object inside of it. Then uh, we've got resolver. We're going to call the yup resolver function. And inside of it, we're going to pass validation schema. Um, this function will go through the inputs for us and validate them one by one. Now I want to add a handler to the buttons on click event. So it triggers the form validation. Uh, so I'm going to add in uh, const on submit. I'm going to pass the data and console log that data out. And going to go down to the basic model on submit. And I'm going to change actually uh, on submit to handle submit. So the name is more accurate. And I'm going to paste it in here. The data is currently empty, but we will get back to it later. With the yup and react hook form functionality that we've added, it's time to link it with our text field. Uh, firstly, I'm going to register that individual input and call that input's name. So spread operator register and inside you're going to put in user ID. 
uh, then I'm going to call an error so it equals to form state errors um, dot user ID with conditional toggle true to false and then in the helper text I'm just going to chain errors dot uh, user ID um, dot message so it will call an appropriate message and now I can just copy and paste uh, what I got and update the values so they match the validation schema. So I'm going to add another text field with um, the email fields and uh, the last one will be with the phone number. Every text field is updated. I've also changed the name of the handler to add user as I think that's the better name. Um, this add user function needs to be wrapped in the handle submit. So if the handle submit is successful, then it will call the add user function. Let's see if our validation works. And as you can see, when submitting only two fields are flagged as errors, it's because we haven't set the phone regex. We're going to add a ready regular expression that I found on the internet and this expression can be found in the video description as well as within the um, GitHub repo. So let's give it another go. Uh, on submit now flags every text field as an error which is great. And if we fill the uh, values inside of the text fields, all the errors should be gone. As you can see, the email validation knows whether the email structure is correct. And if all of the text field inputs are errors free, then on submit we'll call add user function. As you can see, it pops up in the um, console log. And this will only happen if the validation is marked as successful. There are three things that we need to fix. So every time we open the model, we want to have an empty input. Secondly, if submit is successful, then we want to close the model. And the last thing is we want to add some extra space between the input fields. We're going to start off with the easiest thing. So let's add some space between the inputs. We can do it by inspecting the input field and grabbing the um, correct class, which in this case is MUI form. And we're just going to paste it back inside of our modal style. So MUI form control. So as you can see up on save, it uh, adds the space between the inputs. Next thing is we want to make sure after the modal closes, our input fields are cleared out. For that, we will have to uh, import use state and use effect. And then we are going to define values state. So const values and set values equals to use state. And as this default, um, we're going to uh, define another const with default states. So um, const default input values equals to object email, uh, phone number and user ID. And we're going to keep it all as uh, an empty strings. Next, we need to set values for each input and add the onChange listener for each input as well. So the first one I'm going to add inside of the um, user ID text field. So onChange, um, then an arrow function. Then I'm going to add handle change event dot target value. And I'm going to pass in the event and then I'm going to add a handler, so const handle change, an arrow function. And inside of it, I want to pass the value. And for now, I'm just going to console lock the uh, value to make sure it works. So as I type, you can see it pops in the console lock, so it's all correct. Now we want to set the values for every single input. Um, so we're going to add an object, user ID, colon, event.target.value, and we're just going to keep the console log. Um, so you can see um, what's changed. So save and go back to the browser. And you can see it comes up uh, as an object. 
and this is what we're going to do for other fields as well um, so I'm just going to copy um, the logic and paste it in the other fields and I'm going to um, uh, change the user ID to the correct values so the phone number and the email so now if you um, save and go to the browser you will find out that the um, input value is being overwritten by the previous input value and that's because we haven't passed the previous state so in order to fix that uh, we just need to add a spread operator so dot 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 um, values and then comma and then our user id event uh, dot target dot value and you're going to do the same thing for um, other inputs So once you save and change the value, then you'll see uh, that it's not being overwritten anymore. But we are not saying the value in the handle change function. So it only shows one value at a time. And in order to fix that, we need to go back to handle change. Uh, we're going to get rid of that console log and we're going to set uh, values to um, value. And once you save it, you'll notice that it all works fine now. Now the last thing, we want to make sure our inputs are cleared on every mount. And we also need to add value prop to our inputs. So the use effect will know which one needs to be cleared. So we're just going to add value prop to each one of them. And we're going to call the value state dot name of the value. Uh, which in the first case going to be value equals to values dot phone number and we're going to do the same thing to other um, text fields so here values dot email and in the last one or the first one uh, value equals to values dot user id in the user fact we want to listen to open and then if it opens then we're going to set values to um, default input fields values I'm just having an issue okay default input values so as you can see when we close it and open it up again it's no longer there okay I think the um, new user model is looking good now we want to pass um, the text field data in the callback so I will just wrap the data in add new user callback and define it as a prop and that way we can pass it to the parent component, which in this case is the authentication page, and we can implement further logic in there. So in the authentication page, in the basic model component, type in add new user equals to add new user and scroll up a bit. And we're going to um, define the function with the same name and pass the data and that data for now, we're just going to console log it out. Okay, we've got console.log um, data. And then let's see if our callback uh, behaves correctly. So I'm going to type in some um, random stuff to text field inputs. And on submit, as we can see, um, the data object is being passed. Now we want to be able to um, display the list with our users so i'm going to add another uh, state and i'm going to type in users uh, set users and use states and empty array as default so i'm going to add the conditional rendering to the um, get content so i'm going to wrap the whole thing with the react fragment and then inside of the uh, i'm going to add um, users uh, actually users.length so if um, users are present in the array, then I'm going to display um, users list. And if there are no um, users, then I'm going to display no users message. And now we're going to um, need users.map method. I'm going to loop through the users and every user field will contain user ID, email and a phone number. I'm going to wrap the whole thing with the um, box um, components 
and inside of it I'm gonna um, call the typography components so I'm just gonna keep it simple for now I don't want to do um, anything fancy now uh, this is only to show you the callbacks and later we're going to use that component to link it with the search functionality so i just want to keep it as simple as possible because we want to focus on the mui features rather than um, some uh, other functionality now in our add new user function we want to push the data to users state so it updates the user list so um, users.push curly braces um, spreading operator and data and as you can see on submit will append new um, list to the um, cart component we also want to make sure the model closes after the a new user been added to the list so you just add set open false and as you can see our model uh, works just fine it adds a new user to the list then it closes itself um, we might want to add some styling to the user list and indicate which string represents what um, so in the typography I'm just gonna add um, user ID email and uh, phone number strings and also I'm gonna add SX props to override box um, default styles so every box component will add some extra space right underneath it okay so let's see how it works I will just add some dummy content to it and see how the styling behaves the last thing that um, we're gonna do in this tutorial will be linking the search functionality with the search bar component that we have created in the previous video and we're going to link it to the users list our search functionality will catch user ID, email address or phone number and if any of those values will match then only these users will appear in the users list so firstly we're going to rename handle change to handle search as it's more accurate and we're going to define a new function called filter data that takes in a value now we want to format the values uh, so whatever we put in will lowercase uh, the value and use the trim method to get rid of the um, spaces inside of a string we also want to add an if statement so if the search bar is empty then we want to set users to search results and as you can see the search results are using users state as default which means if there's no value in the search bar it will show the default user state or else if there's a value in the search bar component then we can filter through the search results to see if the value is matching our search query so we're going to pass an item and return an object dot keys um, item and then we're going to use the sum method uh, basically that method tests whether at least one element in the array passes the test implemented by the provided function so it returns either true or false and in the return value we're going to add item key to string to lowercase um, that includes the lowercase value okay and outside of that function still within the else um, we want to set users to uh, filtered data and I believe this will work um, we just want to pass the uh, filtered data inside of the handle search and we can save and test the functionality so the first thing we need to do um, we're going to add some dummy content inside of our text fields and I guess I'm going to add some um, up to three users that way our search query test uh, will be more accurate so 
say the second user I'm going to type in bb at gmail.com and then some uh, number six and as you can see once the search function is triggered it, it displays the values for all keys user id email and the phone number and if the search bar component is empty then it resets the search state and displays default users going to add a third user to see if the search functionality matches more than one result Okay, great. Um, it all looks good now. Um, I think the authentication page is complete and we can move on to other MUI features. So in this video, you've learned how to add and customize a reusable model. We've added text fields and hooked it up to the form validation libraries, then passed the validated data in a callback. We've created a dynamic user list and linked it up to the search bar component that filters out the users using keys like email, phone number and user ID. That's all in this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.